good everybody welcome back to another my damn toys video tonight i have your wwe money in the bank 2019 full show review for you guys how these videos work is i'm gonna run down the entire car talking about everything that happened at the show breaking down the matchups the feuds what i liked about the matches were the matches good in my opinion all the feuds all the stuff that happened at the show and breaking down everything that happened in between money in the bank is my second favorite pay-per-view behind the royal rumble going into this show i was very hyped guys very nice card going into this show but would it live up to the hype? Let's go ahead and find out and dive straight into this card. So starting things off with the kickoff show, guys, we had the matchup between Daniel Bryan and Eric Rowan taking on the Usos. At first, I thought this match was for the SmackDown Live Tag Team Championships, but it was not. Daniel Bryan and Rowan, of course, did win the SmackDown Live Tag Titles from the Usos on Monday Night Raw due to the wild card rule bullcrap. So the Usos were having a match here tonight, not for the titles or anything, but just a regular tag team match. And what a great match, man. I, I, I just love tag team wrestling. Isn't it just a nice breath of fresh air when we get a great tag team matchup on a pay-per-view, man? I wish they would be like NXT and they would bring the level of tag team wrestling. You know how important tag team wrestling is in NXT? I want the same thing for the main roster. And this matchup was very good. I enjoyed it so much. I thought the sequences and everything, the back and forth between both teams was really great. The chemistry was totally there. I can totally believe Rowan and Brian as a tag team. I think they look great. And I thought they performed well. The Usos, obviously one of the best tag teams in the world, looked great as well. And just really good stuff, man. The Usos did beat Rowan and Brian, though. That really surprised me. I did not expect that at all. But I guess they wanted to have that pinfall victory. So I guess that we will probably get a championship match either on Monday Night Raw or SmackDown Live. Or we'll get it at the next show. But I'm excited to see where these tag teams go. Maybe we can give another element added to this matchup on the next one. Very good matchup to open the show. What a perfect way to start a pay-per-view on the kickoff show. I hate that this had to be on the kickoff show, but it was a great match nonetheless less and the Usos do defeat the SmackDown Live Tag Team Champions. So we started off the show, guys, with a hot one. We had to start off with one Money in the Bank ladder match because, you know, we had two of these on the night and we wanted to space them out. So WWE did that, of course, and started off with the women's version. In this matchup, we had Dana Brooke, Mandy Rose, Natalia, Carmella, Ember Moon, Bailey, Naomi, and Nikki Cross. I am a huge fan of Bailey and Ember Moon, two of my favorite women on the roster coming in, and I wanted them to have a good showing in this matchup. And I think they both did that. I thought that they had a great performance in this matchup. I thought the spots in this match were were really good. I think, I, I don't know why this, this match felt uh, a little bit better than past years. It was just super botchy, man. Like, I don't know what it was, but um, it was just super botchy. I, I just didn't understand. Like, all of the spots in this match were awesome. Like, I love the creativity behind them. I love the flow of the matchup. I thought that it flowed really nicely. But the execution and the, the just botchiness of it, the, all the ladder moves came off super weak. They came off super uncoordinated and kind of like half effort. Like, I don't know, like the ladders were a little bit too heavy, so they couldn't swing them as hard or they couldn't land the shots as well, or they, you know, they couldn't run up the ladder as good, or I don't know, it was just, I, I love the spots they were going for, it just came off really uh, weak in execution, if that makes sense. I would love to know if you guys thought that too, it just seemed like the ladders weren't connecting very hard, the women kept tripping up, and like, having to like oversell and I, I don't know but there was a really dumb spot at the beginning of the match guys with Nikki Cross she put like the ladder over her head and was like swinging it around and, she, and people just kept running into it like it made no sense to me it looked really awkward and weird there was one point where Mandy run, ran up the ladder and kneed Dana Brooke in the face which it was a great spot but it just didn't land in execution halfway through the match guys Carmella uh, it seemed like she really got injured I don't know if it was legitimate or not but she took a nasty fall and you can tell she's limping she's getting up and Mandy Rose tries to go to her she says you can literally hear her say get away from me and then um, she gets limped to the back by referee she would return later in the matchup with a wrap around her knee limping to the ring and I don't know if that was kayfabe or if that was legit and she came back I'm not sure I'm sure we'll get a story on that later on in the week but again it's some great spots in this matchup that just just did not land all the way to me but very very creative stuff at one point my girl Ember climbs up the ladder and hits an eclipse on Natalia from the ladder very very nice spot outside the ring. The crowd did chant holy shit. I, I was chanting holy shit. What a great move there off the ladder. The end of the matchup came when Carmella would come down the ramp. Mandy Rose would try to attack her. She would fight off Mandy Rose. Carmella would get in the ring. Sonya Deville would come from behind, yank down Carmella, beat her up, go outside the ring, scoop up Mandy, climb the ladder with Mandy draped over her shoulder, get to the top of the get to the top of the ladder right at the briefcase. Bailey would then climb up the top, shove Mandy and Sonya off, and retrieve the women's 
Money in the Bank briefcase. Very nice here. I love that Bailey won. She really needed this win. I predicted her to win, and I'm very excited for her. Always been one of my favorites on the main roster. I just think that they've always overlooked her, and they haven't booked her to the strength that, you know, she could totally be. And I hope that this Money in the Bank briefcase gives her a surge of momentum, guys. She really does need it. And some things I thought about when she won is could she cash in for both championship belts? You know, if she attacked Becky Lynch in the first matchup, could she cash in for both titles and then have to defend the second title versus Charlotte or Lacey Evans, given whichever one was first? I don't know. I was, I was thinking stuff all over the place. But Bailey does win here. I enjoyed the matchup, even though it was just super, it could, it was super botchy at times, man. It, it was unfortunate. But Bailey does win, and I was very excited for Bailey. I'm happy with this result and cannot wait to see where her character goes from here with the Money in the Bank briefcase. Next up, guys, we have the United States Championship match between my man Samoa Joe taking on Rey Mysterio. And to be honest with you guys, as this match was starting, Rey Mysterio was making his entrance. My power flickered. All the power in my house went flick, flick. Had to reset everything. It took about maybe three or four or five minutes. I don't, I don't know. It wasn't that long at all. I get the WWE Network back on, and the new champion is Rey Mysterio. I didn't get to see any of the matchup. I don't know what the hell happened. What I've seen is that uh, this matchup wasn't very long at all, and there's supposed to be a controversial pin, you know, uh, Samoa Joe, his shoulders weren't all the way down, and Samoa Joe was pinned by Rey Mysterio after the matchup. Samoa Joe would beat down on Rey Mysterio. This is where I got back into it. I turned back on the TV. Rey Mysterio's music is going off. Samoa Joe comes down, beats the hell out of him. You know, Dominic just sits there and watches, which is Rey Mysterio's son. He just sits back and watches Joe. You know, he's totally terrified and all this stuff. Rey Mysterio gets beat down, and I don't know if this is going to continue the feud. You would expect it to continue, but I want to see a full-fledged match between these two guys. I want to see a 10-15 minute match between both of these guys. I think it would be a really good one. You know, we didn't get it at Mania. We didn't get it here at Money in the Bank. If it happened here at Money in the Bank, I, I guess there was some sort of time lapse or something because I totally didn't see it. And there's no way between the time my power flickered and the time I got it back on, there's no way they, these two had a nice full-fledged match. So I really want to see these two ha have a good match, man. And plus the ending has me thinking that Samoa Joe is definitely not going to go into bigger and better things from now because uh, he, he was pinned controversially. So we're going to have to see where that goes. But Rey Mysterio is your new United States champion, and I don't know what the hell happened between his entrance and the and the result of the matchup. Next up, guys, we had the steel cage match between The Miz and Shane McMahon. Going into this matchup, guys, I really didn't care for the feud. I know that, you know, it's been building for a while, and I, I can enjoy long-term storytelling, and that is what this is. So I, I, can, I can respect that, and I can enjoy it to that aspect. And this matchup was good. I just don't really care for the heel Shane McMahon and the face Miz, mainly the babyface Miz because I like Shane McMahon as a heel. This steel cage match wasn't bad. I thought it was good. I just don't understand the outcome of it. I guess this rivalry is going to continue because at one point in the matchup, Shane McMahon was getting pinned and he put his foot on the rope and the ref stopped counting at two, but in a steel cage match, in a no disqualification match, which is in a steel cage, you could not kick out at two using the ropes, so I don't know. So I'm guessing that this is going to lead to another matchup at the next pay-per-view, I guess culminating at Extreme Rules or maybe in Saudi Arabia at Super Showdown or whatever they're planning. But Shane McMahon does win. The end of the matchup comes when Miz has Shane at the top of the steel cage trying to suplex him over the side back inside the ring. Shane McMahon would slip out of his jersey and his shirt would come off and he would fall to the floor and win the matchup. Shane McMahon wins. No Roman Reigns, no Elias, no interference in this matchup, just both men going head to head. It was a solid matchup for what it is. I mean, I enjoyed the matchup. I thought it was pretty solid, but I don't know. I just, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I, I'm not invested in this. I feel like it should have had Miz win at WrestleMania and that be the end of it. You know, we had that false count anywhere match. They beat the hell out of each other. It could have easily ended there with Miz winning, but we're continuing to go on and on and I don't know. I don't know. I enjoyed the match though, the sh but Shane McMahon does defeat the Miz for a second time in a row. After that match, guys, we cut backstage and Braun Strowman, you know, has been looking for Sami Zayn all through the night. You know, it started at the beginning of the show. He was looking for Sami Zayn. He was really pissed off because Sami Zayn took his spot in the Money in the Bank ladder match. We cut backstage and Sami Zayn is hung upside down. A bunch of referees and Triple H are like, get those cameras the hell out of here. What the hell is this going on? And Sami Zayn appears to be beat up by Braun Strowman, we assume. Also announced on Monday Night Raw, we are getting a new championship title belt by Mick Foley. Mick Foley going to announce the brand new title on Monday Night Raw. I'm super excited for this. First of all, way too many championships in WWE already, so that's the first point I'm going to make. Second of all, is it going to be a hardcore title? Why the hell would Mick Foley be announcing it? It has to be a hardcore title at some point, right? Also, it cannot look like the WWE Championship. It cannot have this mold. If it looks like this, if it's shaped like this at all, I'm going to be super pissed. Like, dude, get away from this mold. There's like
like five championships with this mode. Be creative. Give us something fresh. But we could be seeing a hardcore title or something new in WWE. I'm just excited for something fresh. Man, I don't know. Mick Foley announcing a new title tomorrow night on Monday Night Raw. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, we have the Cruiserweight Championship match between the brand new champion Tony Nese taking on Davari. And to be honest with you guys, I wasn't very interested in this matchup. I preferred Buddy Murphy. I preferred Cedric Alexander. I preferred Neville as the Cruiserweight Champion. I thought that they were much better champions than Tony Nese. Tony Nese can totally go in the ring as a wrestler, but as charisma and as a character, I just don't think that he really has it, at least not at this point. He just, I, I don't know, man. Me and uh, me and my boy Cody were talking about it. He just doesn't have very much charisma, and uh, I think it took away from this match. I wasn't a big fan of this match. Uh, Davari looks absolutely dumb in those pants. I don't know what that was. Uh, I think the last three or four minutes of this match were great. I, I like the interactions and the back and forth high paced action. But all you need to know is that Tony Nese does win here and I think this is the right decision given he just won the title and Davari isn't the greatest character to me. Tony Nese wins and that is it for your Cruiserweight Championship match. After the matchup, guys, we cut backstage to Triple H walking around. He comes up to Braun Strowman and he goes, you know what, Braun, I know you beat up Sami Zayn. I know what you did to Sami Zayn. And he says, just because you beat up Sami Zayn, that does not mean I'm going to put you in this Money in the Bank matchup. That's not how this works. I'm not, go I'm not going to put you in this matchup. I'm not going to replace Sami Zayn with you because you beat him up. And Braun's like, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. And Triple H is like, yeah, 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 you don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Whatever. I know what you did to Sami Zayn. You know what you did to Sami Zayn. And I'm not even going to ask you to be, I'm not even going to call the police. I'm not even going to have security escort you. I'm not going to do any of that. I'm not going to do any of that. I'm going to ask you as a professional, as your boss, to leave this building. And Braun Strowman just said, whatever, man, and walked off. So I guess we're doing the storyline through the night of, you know, uh, sort of a mystery. Uh, Braun Strowman saying he didn't beat up Sami Zayn, even though he was pissed off at him and looking for him at the beginning of the show. I was intrigued by this. I was invested in this. I like this. I like storylines in my wrestling. I like WWE giving me a storyline. Give me something. Loving it this far. Triple H being on TV, too. Love that. Love the game, interacting with the talent. Good stuff. But who attacked Sami Zayn? Next up, guys, we had the first of two women's championship match for Becky Two Belts, taking on Lacey Evans in her first matchup for the Raw Women's Championship. I've not been a big fan of Lacey Evans coming into this. I know she has some good athleticism. She has some cool offense. And she impressed me in this matchup. I thought she held her own. I thought that, you know, some of her stuff was a little bit sloppy at times, and I feel like the whole show was a bit sloppy at times for that matter. To be honest with you guys, I feel like uh, a lot of spots were, you know, botched or missed, and uh, including a lot in this match and the match with Charlotte. But this matchup was solid for what it was. Becky does end up winning the matchup and retaining her Wa Raw Women's Championship, which is what I predicted would happen here. After the matchup, Becky is celebrating, and then out comes Mrs. Charlotte Flair, guys. Charlotte Flair pops up, and we have our second matchup going right now. Charlotte comes out and is like, come on, bro, we're going right now. And apparently, uh, they made it known on commentary that Becky didn't have to fight right now, but she ended up doing it anyway, I guess, because of her toughness and her attitude and, you know, a pride uh, in the way here. But she does go one-on-one -on -one with Charlotte after this. Solid matchup. You guys know that these, these guys have fought so many different times before. They have great chemistry in the ring, and it showed again here in this matchup. Another great slugfest here between the two. Many chops, many back and forth. Lacey Evans would come out and hit a women's right on Becky Lynch. Uh, Charlotte would go after Becky Lynch after this. Becky would get a small package onto Charlotte. One, two. Doesn't get the cover. Charlotte totally misses a big boot, guys. Goes for the big boot. Completely whiffs, but Becky sells it anyway and gets pinned one, two, three and loses her SmackDown Live Women's Championship. And this is what I predicted would happen. I thought this would happen. And she, she keeps her Raw Women's title. She stays over there with Seth Rollins and everything. But Charlotte does take the blue title off of Becky. So Charlotte is celebrating in the ring getting in Becky's face, you know, saying, what are you gonna cry? You're gonna cry, you big baby. Farts in a whole bag. Sacky sack. Becky Lynch goes after Lacey Evans because, you know, she attacked her during the match and ultimately kind of cost her the matchup, interfering in that SmackDown Live Women's Championship match. So then Charlotte gets involved and both of them are beating the hell out of Becky in the corner, you know, beating up on her, beating up on her. Out comes Bailey with her Money in the Bank briefcase, interfering in the matchup, and she comes to save the day for Becky Lynch, starts beating up on Lacey Evans, hits the Bailey to belly on Lacey Evans, beats up on Charlotte. Charlotte goes to attack Bailey. She ducks it. She hits her face on the turnbuckle, knocking her unconscious. 
watch this for a moment. Bailey thinks about it for a moment. The crowd's going nuts. I thought the crowd was excellent on this night. Am I, am I just crazy or was the crowd on fire for most of this show? I thought they were excellent. I don't even know where they were tonight, but they, they were great. Bailey cashes in her Money in the Bank contract, slides Charlotte out of the corner, hits the big Macho Man elbow drop onto Charlotte. One, two, three, and Bailey wins the SmackDown Live Women's Championship. So she gets the Money in the Bank briefcase earlier in the night and cashes in just like last year with Alexa Bliss. And uh, there was a really awesome shot in the crowd. Uh, some stupid championship falling off the arm here. There was a really awesome shot in the crowd where she took her SmackDown Live Championship and she took a fan's Money in the Bank briefcase. It wasn't the women's, it was the men's replica. However, it was a really cool shot of her holding up both. And one thing I thought about, guys, is is this supposed to be a big middle finger to Sasha Banks or did they legitimately like Bailey and want to push Bailey? I don't know, man. It just seems really odd. This They haven't done anything with Bailey. They haven't pushed her in a long time and then finally Sasha walks out and they're like, fine, you want to walk out on us? We'll take your best friend and push her to the moon and give her all these great things. Another thing is Charlotte has another championship reign under her belt, which literally lasts like a few seconds, which is fine, I guess. But I'm super happy for Bailey. These are my two favorite women outside of Asuka in the WWE, and they both have the championship, so I'm super excited. I'm so happy for Bailey. I think this is awesome. She truly deserves this moment. She truly deserves all of the cred that she's getting here, and I thought this was a great moment, her getting the SmackDown Live Women's Championship. Excellent stuff, man. Great, great stuff here. Both women. So we have Becky Lynch over on Raw and Bailey over on SmackDown Live as your new champion. Next up, guys, we had the singles match between Roman Reigns and Elias, and this must have wasn't really much of a match at all, was it? Elias, uh, you know, attacks Roman Reigns with a guitar from behind in the backstage area. Elias goes out on the stage, does his usual stick, yada, 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 shits on the crowd, just like Monday Night Raw, does his his usual thing that he does every single week. Roman Reigns comes out, Superman punch, throws him in the ring, bell rings, spear, one, two, three, Roman Reigns win. I don't know what the point of this was. Who cares? I, I mean, like, I, I don't understand this at all. No Shane McMahon, no interference, no authority stuff going on. It, it really just, I, I don't know what to say. I thought we were going to have some, you know, some tie-ins from The Miz and Shane to Elias and Roman Reigns. We did not get that at all. We got a matchup that literally lasted like four seconds, so I, I really don't know what's going on here. But Roman Reigns does win. I, I expected Elias to win on some shenanigans, but this man doesn't even wrestle anymore. Uh, Elias doesn't even wrestle anymore, guys. I mean, he just comes out, sings songs, and gets beat up and loses. I mean, that's about it for Elias. But Roman Reigns does defeat him here in, in mere seconds. Next up, guys, we have the Universal Championship Fantasy Matchup between my boy Seth Rollins taking on the phenomenal AJ Styles. I have been waiting on this matchup for so very long, and we finally got it here tonight at Money in the Bank, and I think they lived up to the hype, guys. I think it was much better than Joe and Styles. I think it was much better than Shinsuke and Styles in all of their matchups. Great chemistry in the ring. I would love to see them add another wrinkle. I, I really wanted AJ Styles to turn heel after the match because I wanted to give this feud another layer. I wanted it to go a little bit further. Maybe you could have gotten the club involved. Maybe, you know, you could extend this thing to SummerSlam. They may still do it. You know, we may still see a heel turn, but it just looked like a passing of the torch, sort of say, um, here between Seth and AJ. What a great matchup. I loved it every every moment. You know, they had their tier one where they, they had the filling out process. They had the tier two where they were going back and forth with some, some great moves, and then they kicked it into high gear with tier three, and it was just great stuff up until the finish, guys. I, I really thought AJ was going to kick out after that big stomp at the end and you know Seth took a minute to go for the cover I really wanted Styles to kick out and then go another five minutes of high gear but you know what it, it was still great for what it was I loved it so much great stuff thus far really great matchup I enjoyed it Seth retains the Universal Championship as he should have I think this was the right call here he beat Brock he beats AJ Styles he's on a huge wave of momentum right now you need to keep that thing going we need to have a huge heel for him to take on though and I don't know why they didn't have AJ turn heel here I, I'm not sure what their plans are, but I thought that this would be the moment for you to get your top heel in AJ Styles. They didn't go for it, so I'm excited to see you know what plans out here for Monday Night Raw and, and the, the, the heel to go up with Seth next. And I also thought that maybe we wouldn't get a finish to this matchup. I thought that maybe Brock Lesnar would show up, you know, in the matchup, have a no contest and, and ruin everybody's time. That didn't happen either, which I'm glad. I'm glad we got a full matchup, but really good stuff here, man. I mean, if you guys missed this match, you definitely need to go back and watch it. I enjoyed it a lot. And Seth retains the Universal Championship. Great stuff here, man. Next up, guys, we have the WWE Championship match between Kofi Kingston defending it against my boy Kevin Owens. And this was a really great match 
matchup, man. I, I really enjoyed this one. I thought that it was terrific the way they booked it. Some great spots. We had a double stump on the apron. We had the, the, the dive to the outside. 360 by Kofi Kingston, but he gets super kicked in the chest. We had just some great sequences between the two. Just really good stuff, man. I'm really enjoying Kofi Kingston's reign. As long as they're not telling me that he won the title and it was the greatest moment ever at WrestleMania every single week, I'm enjoying it. I, I thought this was a great match. I would have loved to see Kevin Owens win here. I love Kevin Owens so much, so I, I really would have appreciated a win here. But I can see Kofi winning here and, you know, going on a longer reign, giving him, you know, a, a good long reign here. And he's putting up great matches. It's not like he's boring or something like Jinder Mahal. He's actually gi giving us good matches and, and making the title prestigious, and I, and I can appreciate that. Like I said, a lot of great back and forth. I thought Xavier Woods would be at ringside for this, but that is not the case at all. I was really shocked that didn't happen. We didn't see Sami Zayn in this matchup, I guess because he got his butt kicked earlier in the night by Braun Strowman or the Mystery Man or whoever. But I enjoyed this matchup, and Kofi Kingston does retain his WWE Championship, and I'm interested to see who will be his challenger moving forward on SmackDown Live. That is something that I'm really intrigued by. But Kofi Kingston does retain, and it was a great showing by both men. And for our main event, ladies and gentlemen, we had the Men's Money in the Bank ladder match between between C and Almas, my boy Randy Orton, Mustafa Ali, my boy Finn Balor, Ricochet, Drew McIntyre, Trash Corbin, and it was supposed to be Sami Zayn or Braun Strowman. Sami Zayn replaced Braun Strowman on Monday Night Raw, beating him in a matchup. Braun Strowman said he did not beat up Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn would then, of course, be beat up on this night leading up to the Money in the Bank ladder match. Everybody thought it was Braun Strowman. Braun Strowman was sent out of the building. He was kicked out of the building by Triple H because he thought that uh, Braun Strowman beat up Sami Zayn. That was not the case, and we would not find out who beat Sami up until later on, but this matchup was epic, guys. I mean, this, this Money in the Bank matchup was amazing. Great spots throughout. I mean, all these guys beat the hell out of each other. I think Finn Balor was the MVP. Man got freaking sunset, sunset power bomb from seeing almost off the ladder to, to another ladder. Bounced like 152 feet in the air. We had RKO's off the ladder. We had, you know, Drew McIntyre chunking Ricochet out of the ring. We well, Just a really good and, and well-booked matchup for all the men. I think everybody got their spots in. You had the double stomp onto the ladder. You had a shotgun drop kick into the ladder. You had just multiple things things, man. I, I love this match a lot until the very end, guys. I, I honestly, I thought, at one point in the match I thought that there was a legitimate shot for everybody to win, but at the end, guys, Mustafa Ali takes Trash Corbin out. I thought Trash Corbin was going to win. I, I Legitimate for a sec. I was like, no way, Brad. They can't do this to me. Mustafa Ali climbs the ladder. He's about to grab the briefcase, and oh my god. The Beast Incarnate Brock Lesnar's music hits. We had not seen him since WrestleMania. He comes out there. He flips the ladder over. Over. He climbs the ladder. He said, guess who's back, baby? And he grabs it, guys. Brock Lesnar is your Mr. Money in the Bank. And I got a lot of BS to say about this because, oh my God. Oh my God, they do it to me again, guys. They have they have ruined the money in the bank for me another year in a row. The streak is alive and well. And guys, I understand why they did it, but they did not have to do this. Like, we don't need a reason for Brock Lesnar to fight Seth Rollins. Why do I need a reason? Brock has never needed a reason to get a rematch. He's never needed a reason to fight for the championship. He could have just been like, I get my rematch or in my contract it says I get rematches. I know that we did away with rematches, but in my contract it specifically says that I get a rematch. Like, I don't understand why they had to do this. I'm pretty much saying they're, they're using this to get him to Saudi Arabia versus Seth Rollins. He's going to come out and he's going to be like, I'm cashing in this Money in the Bank contract for Seth Rollins at Saudi Arabia. I want my rematch. That's, that's what I'm thinking is going to happen, but oh my God, why? Why did we need this? Like, you could have given it to anybody else. I mean, I, I'm going to be honest, I like this better than Trash Corp. Corbin. But this is still awful. I mean, my God, guys, does the company, this company, when something, when somebody's excited about something, they know, they know how to just destroy it, man. I, I can't believe, I mean, I don't put it past them, though. Like, this is typical WWE booking. This is, this is unreal. I cannot believe they actually did this. I mean, honestly, I wish that, you know, somebody would band together and be like, hell no, nah, that's our briefcase. Have another Money in the Bank ladder match, and then, you know, just give him his title match anyway, because this is just a lot, this is just, oh my God. I mean, I, I'll 
give it to you. It's definitely a swerve. It's definitely storytelling, and I, I can enjoy a good story, but my God, did it have to be this way? Oh my goodness, guys. That That is your Money in the Bank pay-per-view for 2019. The Brock Lesnar's Mr. Money in the Bank. Beast in the Bank is what they're calling it. I am completely dumbfounded. I, I am shocked. I am just co in complete shock right now. I did not see this coming at all, and oh my goodness. But I, I, I guess we gotta find out what happens on Raw. We get a new title tomorrow night. Is it gonna be a hardcore championship from Mick Foley? Maybe maybe that'll be good. I, I don't trust anything in WWE's hands. I mean, if, if, example number one, evidence number one right here, guys. Jesus. But that, that pretty much does it for your Money in the Bank 2019 pay-per-view, guys. I love the Seth Rollins versus AJ match. Kevin Owens versus Kofi was great. The ladder match was terrific outside the ending. I enjoyed Bayley becoming champion. I enjoyed the tag team match. The, hell, uh, the steel cage match wasn't terrible. I don't know. Pretty solid show, I guess. I just hated the ending, man. I, 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 I am completely uh, just uh, baffled right now, but that pretty much does it for this video, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you guys did enjoy, please comment down below what you thought about the show. What did you think of the review? I would love to know all of your thoughts down below. Subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE figure videos. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys, and I will see you guys in the next video. What the hell just happened?